Welcome to Outlaw Edge. So today I'm taking uh, some metal conduit, electrical conduit, and I got it shaped out for the, the front fender. And then after I'm done doing that, I take and shape this uh, quarter inch round cold rolled steel. Uh, use cold rolled because it, it bends a lot easier and uh, you can shape it where you don't get the kinks. Got my windshield posts on there on the last video and they need to be welded up, but we're gonna take the plasma cutting table, the CNC plasma table, and I'm building some art deco pieces for right here with that table. But today what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna get these welded on here where I want them. That way I can start shaping the pieces of metal for the front fender and getting the shape in there so I can put the headlights in there. Uh, we, we sandblasted the headlights and they were ruined but I can still use them as the, you know, for the shape. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. And I have these pieces already made here. And they're starting to get surface rust because the car was in storage. So this guy will go here. You see, I put all the shape and stuff in it, formed it. And then I got uh, like two more pieces for the rear of the fender. But I'll get those next probably on the next video, but for today, we're gonna to work on this front fender. So this is just mock-up. I'm taking some uh, round electrical, this is a five eighths, I believe it is, or I'm sorry, half inch uh, electrical conduit. It's galvanized. I know somebody's gonna piss and moan about that, but um, I'm being real careful. It's ventilated in here. I got fans going and everything else. So it's not a big deal. You can hear them in the background. <clears throat> but uh, be careful with the welding on the galvanized. But this is just spot welds to hold this uh, piece on here. And then I'll use this piece to shape my uh, sections of front fender. So I can start getting the front fender built and then it'll be just like the back fender. It'll get mocked up and then I'll be able to uh, shape my metal, uh, sheet metal around it, around that fender. And that's what we're working on today. Got everything ready and realized I didn't have my welding on it, so. <clears throat> kind of a hard thing to do it uh, without a second person. So I might have to uh, put it on here, check it, cut it off, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna have to run a streamline on here so I can catch that back fender too, so I'll have to do that in a little bit. I'm trying to get it spot one right on the front here.
So I might add many pieces right here just to hold stuff together, but this gets all, this all gets cut off. Right now I'm basically just working on the shape so I get my uh, inner fender wheel uh, built so that I can build the fender around that so I know where my turning radius is. And the car right now is all the way down on the airbags. So it's sunk all the way down where the body's sitting about uh, three or four inches off the ground. And it's, when I say off the ground, I'm talking about off the welding table. And I want to make sure that it's centered in my fender. That looks good. I might need to add another brace or so, but for now that'll work. And I need to go back over here and weld this back piece up now. <clears throat> Takes a lot of work to do these YouTube videos. So it helps if you guys subscribe and uh, hit the like, uh, the thumbs up because uh, it puts you in the algorithms where you make a little bit more money and you could do, uh, you know, you could put out some more uh, videos or whatever. So if you guys are enjoying the video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Also, leave a comment down below. And uh, I'll answer, I, I try to answer all, my, all the questions on my uh, channel. So that's pretty close. Um, I, like I said, I gotta run either a laser or run a streamline down here so I know I got my fenders on right so that one isn't farther away from the car than the other or whatever. And then I gotta match the other side when I go to do the same thing. And when I build these fenders, I build, like when I built the back fenders, I built the left and the right both at the same time. So right now the passenger side fenders on and underneath my welding table is the, the other table or the other uh, fender, the rear fender, the driver side. And uh, I'm trying out this new welder. I'll be doing some videos on that pretty soon. And I wanted to thank Yes Welder because they're the ones that sponsored this video today. Uh, yes Welder sent me the welder. And uh, it's a MIG, TIG, ARC, uh, multi-process, whatever. And uh, it's got a uh, TIG welder with a with a uh, lift arc on it. I've never tried that before. And we were messing around with it. Seems like a pretty cool welder. So we'll be doing some uh, videos on that and some of these other uh, you know, doing some other videos on the welder or whatever. But like I said, thanks uh, Yes Welder for sponsoring the video. <clears throat> the next thing I'm gonna be doing, I think I'll be uh, taking some of this round rod that I'm using here. This stuff here, sorry about that. This stuff here is, uh, this is just mocked up. You can see the fenders move around. But I use this round, this is solid quarter inch round rod and I use this to form the buck and then to build the panels over the top of that with the sheet metal for the fender. And uh, I'll be doing that on the front. Uh, first thing first though, uh, I noticed that that fender is leaning in just a little bit. So on the front fender that I'm mocking up right now. So I'll pull that out and get it moved around. And then when I start, uh, I'll film some more when I start uh, forming the, the quarter inch round rod to build the front fender. So the next thing I do is I take denatured alcohol and I use this a lot for the TIG welding and I'll, I'll uh, put some on a rag 
and all the solid round rod stock that I use to build the fenders and stuff, I wipe it down because it has the oil on it. And uh, if you want to weld it or whatever, it's got like that Cosmoline, <clears throat> but you don't want to be using a brake clean because uh, that turns into like sarin gas, which is the stuff like in World War One. I believe it's the same crap that they're uh, that it ends up making. So if you use brake clean, it will uh, when you're welding it, it can make you really really sick. Same as uh, galvanized, you know. And a lot of people don't realize it, but if the galvanized metal, that green gas that comes off of it, makes you sick. If you drink milk, it'll uh, make you feel better, and that's the honest god truth. And I'm not messing with you. That's that's the that's a real welder's trick. And then obviously you don't leave your uh, rag on the welding table. I always spread them out and let them dry and then throw them away. So I'm gonna take this next. <clears throat> so I'll take this uh, round rod next. And, and then what I'll do is I'll start bending it so that I got the shape of my fenders. And uh, then I can start tacking these pieces on there. And I use this old rim behind me. This, uh, oh, where'd it go? Right here, this uh, Model A or, no, I guess it'd be like a Model T, Model A, Model T rim off an old car. And I use that to bend the uh, round rod uh, into the shape that I need as I'm cutting the pieces so I can get the nice, nice swoopy shapes like these fenders have, you know? And you can see right here, nice sweep like that. I bent all this right on that rim. Uh, I didn't use a tubing bender. Uh, I might on the on the end I might have used a tubing bender, but as far as the front piece, uh, that's what I used. But it's pretty straight now. It's pretty close, straight up and down, level, plumb, true, whatever. I'll take some measurements, get it close, and this is just close. Now, when I do the round rod, I want that to be real precise because you want to do the left side and the right side at the same time, and you want them to match so that your car is not two inches bigger on the other side or whatever, you know. And that's. A lot of people don't realize, but like when you uh, coach builders or uh, panel beaters, uh, people that would build cars by hand back in the day, there, there would actually be measurements like three quarters of an inch or five eighths inch out, out on each side uh, with a lot of those cars because they're handmade. They're not pumped out in the factory by the thousands, you know? So if I finish this car, it'll be one of one, you know? It'll be, there'll only be one of them in the world. It'll be my car. And that's kind of like why I'm doing this. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep bending some pieces. I don't wanna keep rambling on. And uh, if I get some more stuff done uh, today, I'll film some more. If not, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate you watching, later. So right now I'm building a brace because this keeps flexing, moving around when I'm trying to bend the piece around this buck here. So I'm gonna get this built. My camera on, yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say too is uh, I've noticed that people, a lot of times they'll get something close <clears throat> and they'll just weld it on because they, they uh, don't like stand back and look at it. And then when the car's done, they're like, oh, I wish I would have done this or wish I would have done that. A lot of times I'll stand back and look at, look at a car anywhere from a half hour to like a couple hours, just trying to, you know, figure out a shape that I want to put. And uh, <clears throat> if you guys watch our other channel, uh, NZ Mopar Outlaw Customs, it's uh, NZ Mopar now on uh, YouTube. He designed this, Glenn Ridd drew this. And uh, we've changed some stuff. I'm gonna make a little bit longer fenders and whatever. And this is the original drawing for this car that we're building. And uh, you know, we, that's why I'm saying like, if there's something you like, change it around now before you get the car done or whatever. But I don't know, I don't wanna keep rambling on. So I have the holes in the table for my uh, jig or for my jigs uh, for the Bessie clamps and I'm using those just to bend the piece of rod to get them where I want it.
still flexing a little bit right here. So I will cut a little piece and slap it in there. <clears throat> you guys can't even see what I'm doing. And then make sure you, you guys will thank me later. Make sure you uh, take that little focus, that little uh, sharp spot off there. Cause uh, when you're working on the cars and stuff, all the time you hit those and it's, you'll be bleeding out. They're sharp, they're like a razor. for today and then uh, I'm gonna cut this video short just so it doesn't get too long and uh, I'll try to uh, you know on the next video I'll try to show a little bit more of what I was doing right here and then I also want to get my headlights and the grill mounted up I've had them mocked up but I'd like to get them where they're uh, a lot more mounted on there so that I can build the fenders and everything to them and uh, another thing down below what do you guys think I'm actually thinking about making, because everything else is rubber mounted, I'm thinking about making this body welded to the frame. What do you think about that? What's your opinion on that? Yes, no, maybe so. Um, I don't know yet. Um, it, will end up being a, it will end up being a show car, but I do want to drive it. And I don't think it's going to have enough flex to even worry about because it has all the uh, suspension and stuff on the car itself on the frame. Um, there's no need for me to take the body off the frame. Uh, once it's all painted and everything, the frame will be painted with it, but... I don't know. And I'm talking about, you know, solid mount body, body mounts where you can unbolt and take it off, but not welded to it. So I hope that makes sense. But uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. I'm gonna shorten this up. That way I don't keep rambling on. Appreciate you guys watching. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. See you on the next one, later.